Got the fatty in the background. What should we call this? The cooking series? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, well, first tell them. Oh, it's recording? Yeah, it's recording. First oh. tell them how I get busy. Listen, first of all, he taught me how to cook in general, okay? <laughs> and I have a famous soup now. I'm eating guacamole now. So... His ability is perfection. And a lot of people have been asking for him to make a cookbook, which is a lot of detail, but I think it's going to be much, much easier and better for him to just show you how he makes all of the things that y'all are excited to try. So the first thing is going to be a salad. My medicine salad. A medicine salad. It don't taste like medicine, though. She can attest. And that's facts. I'm about to eat one right now. Oh, I can show them mine. Yeah, for sure. And she never used to eat salad. So, for me to make them to the degree where she could eat it. Our salad was getting a bag of spinach and drenching it. And yeah. uh, follow your heart ranch. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, she realizes it's levels now. Facts. All right. So, Buddhist candy for today. That's what we're going to call okay. it right now. And you don't have to stay here, but you can if you want to. I know you're about to go do your thing. Yeah. All right. Um, so the reason I call this a medicine salad, it look good? It looks good. Like I know what I'm doing? Yeah, it does. reason I call this a medicine salad, let me stay on camera as I say that. The reason I call this a medicine salad is because, you know, growing up black, it was the dough bag. You throw that thing in there, some tomatoes and cucumbers, call it a day, and it's not, it's not really nutrient dense. Um, even if you enjoy salad, you're not getting the most out of what you could if you are able to experiment with different leafy greens. If you understand a different nutritional value in other leafy greens besides what most of us know, which is just romaine um, and spinach. So I've been doing this type of salad, I think five years at this point. Um, and so it has nutritional value. But it tastes rocking. And being that it's so much nutrients in it, sometimes salad, salad isn't filling. Being that you're getting all these nutrients coming in at the same time, you will feel full off of this salad. If you're somebody that's trying to do a raw fast, this is something you will be able to do every day and feel satiated and feel full. So and not, get all the flavors. And get all your flavors. So without further ado, I'm not going to hold y'all up. Show y'all my ingredients. We got... Nutritional yeast, once we get to the seasoning part, nutritional yeast has 520% thiamine, 480% uh, riboflavin, 220% niacin, 420% uh, vitamin B6, 630% vitamin B12. B12 is something a lot of vegans say um, is difficult to get into your diet. So if you're vegan, you're plant-based, and you're not using this, get you some nutritional yeast. We got our salt-free herb uh, mixture. We got some turmeric. This is just good for blood flow. It's not going to add much flavor. And then we just got some basic Italian seasoning. Also, no salt in that. All right, so first things first. Start with my box of spring mix. Of course, organic when you can do it. All right, and it's different brands out here, but as long as they got, you know, the, the main stuff, um, you know, your, uh, what's it called? What's the spicy joint? What? Arugula. As long as it got some arugula in there, a lot of times this will have uh, some spinach in it as well. A little bit of um, baby lettuce. So you get a nice little mix and this is going to be the base of the salad. Right? Like such. Easy peasy. Once you got your base, I like what I call biteability. Um, eventually I'm going to launch something called that, but for right now, for me, biteability is how something chews, how convenient it is to chew. So even a lot of the ways that I chop my salad is to have optimum biteability so you ain't got to struggle. You don't got different textures of greens fighting against each other. Um, it just makes it very easy to bite and chew. The better you are able to chew, the better you're able to digest. And that's super important with greens because sometimes greens can be rough on the stomach. I was to a point where I was eating way too much salad. Um, too big of a salad uh, too many times a day 
And I started to realize that it was having or taking a toll on my digestive system. So you do got to be easy, even though it's, it's greens, it's raw, you would think it's healthy, and it is, but everything in moderation. So I just break up my base a little bit. Matter of fact, I'm hungry. I ain't eating today. So I'm going to put a little bit more in there. And you can put as much or as little of this as you want. All right, so my base is ready. Easy peasy. All right, once again, I just broke it up a little bit, not too crazy. If you break up or dice uh, leafy greens too much, then you have pretty much their blood, their chlorophyll will start to spill out. So if you have a cutting on a white cutting board and you see it's like a lot of moisture on it, you probably cutting your greens a little bit too much. You still want to have to have some girth and some bulk and not lose too much of that blood because that's what you need going in your system. All right, so the next step, I got my red leaf lettuce. Um, I kind of fell in love with red leaf a few years ago with all the different recalls and romaine lettuce. I started to not trust romaine. Y'all can do what y'all want. I'm not telling you what to get, but I kind of shy away from romaine unless there's nothing else available. Right, and then I just like the texture and the taste of red leaf. It got a little bit more diversity um, in its taste and how it feels when you chew it. Right, so uh, leafy greens can get very soggy if you wash them. So I just do my best to wipe off. Right, I wash my other vegetables with baking soda, lemon, or lime. It'll fizz up, and you'll see that brown water after about five minutes. All the dirt just comes right off it. So you don't even gotta buy the expensive veggie washers bake a little bit of baking soda enough to you know once you got it in a bowl you shake it up it's covering everything up hit it with the lemon juice it's going to sound like a sprite <laughs> it's going to sound like that snap crack and pop from rice krispies so but for red leaf i just wipe off All right. one more a little pack so this is a good amount for the uh size of the salad i'm about to make Put this to the side. Be careful with your knives. Right? And to expedite, to save time, I just put what I'm going to actually cut on top of each other. So I got my Lacento kale. There's different types of kale out here. This is the most nutrient dense. This is the least bitter. Of course, you can cook this, but I find this to be the most enjoyable out of all the different kales. Um, so I always use Lacento kale, also known as Dino kale because they got that dinosaur-like texture, right? I do about two of those. This is very harsh on the digestive system if you do too much of it. So it used to be to the point I use that the most. Now, only a small portion of that in my salads. My digestive system has been a lot better since I made that transition, All right? So even with stuff like leafy greens, you gotta respond to how your body is responding to the food and listen to it. Took me a long time to figure out I was using way too much Lacento kale, All right? And Lacento kale, dandelion, you gotta get bitters in your system. Some people would take the supplements. I like to get my bitters in their natural state. So dandelions, the Lacento kale, um, my cilantro, all these are different bitters and bitters help to extract the heavy metals that will turn into free radicals in your body. Those free radicals create spaces for dis-ease to be able to develop. So if you're able to take those trace metals out of the body, less free radicals, less space for disease to uh, incubate itself, right? So this is why there's a science to how I make this salad. So Lacento kale, I got my red leaf, I got my dandelion, and bitter means there's a bitter taste, but I balance it out with the spring mix. I balance it out with the red leaf so it don't feel like you eating a medicine salad. It's just enjoyable. It just tastes like a salad, right? So I do about, me personally, I do still a good amount of dandelion, right? And growing up in New Jersey, this was grown out of the streets everywhere. If you're in an urban area, you probably walk past dandelion every single day. Um, so yeah, the dandelion, I got my dill. Dill just gives it flavor-wise a nice pop. Um, I'm not super 100% on all the different health benefits of dill. I know there are a lot. I just like the flavor of it and how it adds to my salad. So y'all can look those things up if you will. I'm not a nutritionist. I just get busy. All right. So I think that's all I need for right now. All right. And as you can see, I'm a fold kind of. I'm a bunch everything up and this makes it easier to cut. Get these things out of my way. And I'll show you how I do it. So bang, bang.
Hopefully y'all can see that. And when you cut, you don't gotta do, the, if you do this, that chlorophyll is gonna come out. You just wanna go straight through, make sure you got a pretty decent light to be able to do it. And you see the size that I'm cutting, it's like strands, like individual strands. So then when they go in there, you got the strands texture, you got the bunches of spring mix texture, and it all comes together nice and gives you a diverse bite, all right? When I get to the meaty part of this, maybe one, two swipes, but you don't wanna be going back and forth. All right, almost there. All right, I'm just kind of picking the knife up, going across. And then I do one, going right down the middle again for that biteability. Done, all right, with that part. So now, let's throw it in. And as I'm throwing it in, I'm already mixing my salad together, right? I don't want one half or just the top to have certain ingredients. I want everything to be in unison all the way through, all right? Use your knife, pick that bad boy up. And I know a lot of people say, you know, I don't got time to do this. Um, I'd rather just eat out. It's hard being plant-based. You got to spend so much money. And when you start to create a relationship with the food, you know, it'd be times I don't feel like cooking. But I come in the house, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to cook anyway. And then I get into it and I realize how much energy I'm receiving from just the process of making what's going to feed my body and give my body the sustenance and the life it needs. So now I have a relationship with food. People say they're foodies, but won't take the time to cook themselves a meal. They'll go out every single day and call themselves a foodie. This is how you become a foodie. This is how you show yourself self-love. This is part of how I find my way to my wife, you know? Source knew I was very good in the kitchen. So, uh, God, Source knew that my wife didn't have that skill set yet, and society says a woman should know how to cook. I got it, and I've been able to teach her the same thing. So you would be surprised how these small levels of self-love we often overlook can materialize into different parts of your life, right? You always wanna keep your station clean. I mean, you feel good, you look good, your, sta your station is clean, you cook good, right? So you just kinda of clean as you go. Mind you, I would've already been done before if I wasn't recording this, so this does not take as long as I'm taking. All right, next up, I got organic radicchio. This looks like a smaller, softer version of, um, what is it, purple cabbage. I used to do purple cabbage, but now, well, I realize at a certain point that it's really hard, and anything that's that hard is going to take more digestive enzymes to break down. So I still wanted that pop of purple. You still want to be able to get your phytonutrients. That means eat the rainbow. So a lot of your meals should have a nice diversity of color because each color in fruits and veggies have different type of chemicals and nutrients and energy that your body needs, that rainbow. So the phytonutrients, eat the rainbow, multiple colors is very important, all right? So I still wanted my purple. I'm like, how can I still get my purple? Switch to Radicchio, right? And this has a nice pop, a nice burst of hydration, and it's super easy, way easier than the red cabbage to be able to digest. Right? This I kind of cube up a little bit, and then I just sprinkle it over the top. Now, I used to be very symmetrical how I used to do this. I would put my radicchio around the rim, like a circle, and I would have a bunch of following circles. So my radicchio will be around the rim. My peppers, which is going to be next, will be another circle, and I would have circles kind of going in. I just enjoyed the, the uh, symmetry of it, the geometry of it. Sometimes I would even put those in the form of hearts. Again, that self-love thing. For whatever reason, my spirit caused me to transition to not having as much geometry and symmetry in the past couple weeks, and I've just been doing it like this. So, got the radicchio. Go to my peppers. I always do the smaller peppers. I got organic, of course. Um, I get the bag that has the tricolor. So this is a yellow one. They usually have oranges, orange ones. I gave the last one to my wife and I got a red pepper. So with cutting peppers, you just cut the head off, right? No seeds left in the middle. And then you just go down the line, boom. Again, for biteability's sake, my wife likes bigger bites of her peppers. I like smaller. So again, I kind of cube these up. Boom, go right over the top. Go right over the top. So we got different greens. We got purple, 
We got some red coming in there, in there now. A lot of phytonutrients coming in. And we don't waste anything. So even that head, most people would throw out. I cut off every piece of it that I can. No waste. As I always tell my son. All right, do it again. Cut the head off. Put that to the side. Go right down. Some biteability. Cube up. Goes over the top. One day the cube. And the stick look and stuff like that. So, bang. And then, don't leave the head. <laughs> do not leave the head out of the equation. Ladies and fellas. But more so ladies. Make sure y'all always give attention. Let me stop. <laughs> I even cut off these sides too. No waste. And this energy, taking this type of time and giving this so much this much attention to detail, that energy goes into your food. It's gonna make it taste better. All right, I'll leave it to the side for now. All right, so we're done with our greens. So far, this is how we're looking, okay? All right, so now we go to our cucumbers. I already washed this off. About that size for this portion. I go across the top, and then once they're kind of laying like that, you just go across again. So you don't gotta do a whole bunch of cuts once they like that. Again, I cube my cucumbers. I just go across, boom. One of them was a stray, gotta get him too. Boom. All right. So we got a new layer of a different type of green, right? A light green. And again, y'all can look up this P-H-Y-T-O nutrients. Phytonutrients. It's going to come up on your Google search as eating the rainbow. Y'all could do your own due diligence on the benefits of doing so. It's a lot of them. This is what heals the body, getting all this diversity of nutrients. All right, then I got my basic tomato. I like to do tomatoes um, that are still on the vine, so you'll see those in the stores. They're still on the actual green vine, which means uh, they haven't started to like, really die yet. And they're still attached to the Divine. Most of the vegetables that we get, we got to understand they're dying. Once they're taken away from their stem, from their root, from the rest of the plant, death is happening. So you want to make sure you get things within reason that are still connected to their life force. I also like heirloom tomatoes. They're a little bit more expensive, so I don't always have it for that. But when I do heirloom tomatoes, and I tell you, bro, them things hit different. Higher level of uh, nutrition hydration taste when i make pasta and stuff like that i do my heirloom tomatoes it just adds a nice layer to it All right got my tomatoes in there matter of fact one second i need some more tomatoes that wasn't enough for the kid there you go. and you're sure to tell you I'm like nah bro you need one of, another one of them things right boom boom also, even in how I'm picking it, whatever seems the least ripe, I'm gonna leave that. If I go to that first, the ones that are ready to go, they're gonna be dead by the time I get to it. Mushy, soggy, unusable. So even that becomes a calculation. And as far as preservation of your greens, if I was home right now, we on vacation, we had an Airbnb. But if I was home, my dandelion would be in a mason jar with a little bit of water at the bottom so they would still be receiving energy and life force and not tap water. I'm using actual water, right? Spring water or reverse osmosis water. I just got a big jug. I go to Whole Foods, I fill it up. I think it's 39 cents a gallon for a high quality water. So my dandelions, my cilantro, my kale will all be in mason jars with a little bit of water at the bottom. So they are still maintaining their life until I can get to it. Also allows your, uh, your leafy greens to last much longer like that. You're almost done, y'all. So bear with me. All right, I got the amount of tomatoes my spirit said I need. Much better, right? There we go. Look at this rainbow. All right, we're getting a little messy, but we're almost there. Um, I don't have some of my ingredients. I usually use chia seeds and hemp seeds to boost up on the protein to add a little bit more, uh, I guess, girthiness energetically. If you ever fasting, make sure you got chia seeds in your water and your juices. They help you to also maintain some of your weight because there's a lot of protein, a lot of fiber in them as well. Um, and then they just add a little bit of crunch. 
like that. Put these to the side. Okay, so I don't have my chia seeds. Usually I would be putting those on top. I have uh, avocado. I got some organic ones over there. Wifey not as strict, strict as I am with the organic. So just to conserve, I'm gonna wait for my organics to get a little bit more right. So I am gonna use some of this today. I mean, you just do the best you can. It ain't always gonna be pristine. It ain't always gonna be organic. You may not always have access to that. So you see how I just went around my avocado. I could put this in the refrigerator. When the seed stays in, more life force stays in, it'll last longer, all right? I get my spoon. This is not my crib, so bear with me, all right? I got my spoon. And then to do this very easy, you find a ridge, and then you just kind of come all the way around. If you're not familiar with avocados, don't let that little bit of brown scare you. It's still gonna taste the same. If it's too brown, yes, it will change the flavor to get funky on you. But this is still good to go. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I just bang, bang, bang. Oops. Bang. And then I like to cube, bigger cubes for the avocado. I don't want them to drown or disappear. I still want to feel some of that texture as I'm eating. So like such, it's a good size for me. Okay. And then I just go. And with it, make sure it's evenly dispensed. So some on each side of my salad. Okay. That's good enough. Dang. I know all this for a salad. <laughs> all right. Okay. And now that I don't have my extras, oh, did I bring my olives? Yes, I love calling my olives, baby. This as well. I know I ran away for a second. I used to, so I thought a lot of things you start to realize. I actually do like that if, if it's prepared properly. So I'm not a fan of the green ones, but these black Kalmada olives, they just taste like a burst of, of salt, but not salt in a way that's going to harm you. Of course, you go easy on them. You don't do too many. But these are mine. So I'm going to dip these in here. Wife ain't worried about it. So for this amount of salad, I do five Kalmada olives. All right, one on each corner, one right in the middle. And they just add a nice pop of saltiness and savoriness, right? So now that that's good, we'll go to our seasoning. I think that's all the ingredients I need. Just a dash of my Italian. Dash, all right, and I'll show you. Mm-hmm, nothing too crazy. A little bit of Italian. A lot of y'all don't season salads. I know we didn't when I was coming up. We relied on the dressing. So once you season it, got your herbs, no salt. It's going to take on a whole nother flavor profile. Now look at all these colors. Purple. Palmada looks black. The reds, the yellows, the greens. All right? A little bit of that turmeric. You don't go crazy with this. Just a little sprinkle. It can throw your flavor off. So just enough for what the body needs. I'm gonna go on with the nutritional yeast last. The base of any salad dressing I use is always gonna start with lime. There are some people who can get away with just all they need is the lime. So I do this to cut down on the amount of oil that I may uh, have in my salad dressing. For whatever reason, this one don't wanna bust it open. All right much out of there as I can. So this helps to extend, um, I guess, how much your salad dressing will actually end up coating your salad. And of course, key lime, whenever possible, a lot of nutrients, right? Helps to wash out the digestive system. So this is a medicine salad because of the nutrients, but it's also extremely digestible because of how I've structured it, All right? So that's enough for right now. Get a little wipe of the hands. And then these are my dressings for today and we done. So as I was talking about the oil, what does this say? Oil free vinaigrette. It's not even any oil in this dressing. And then I got Brianna's. This is not a brand I usually use because they have canola oil in a lot of their dressings. They just stepped up and they released a, a part of their brand that has avocado oil. 
Still not one of my go-tos, but this was on sale. I wanted to give it a shot, so this is what I'm using. And it'll be a combination. So I already got the key lime. I usually do MCT oil. I don't have it here. I just sprinkle a little of that MCT oil. Great for the brain. You can look up the benefits of MCT. All right, so boom, 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 boom. Okay. A little dashes, let me shake him up. Little dashes of this avocado vegan garden ranch, which is pretty good. I like this uh, this addition they've added to Brianna's. Nothing too crazy, because all this is gonna get mixed together. Okay. And a lot of dressings have a lot of fat. So sometimes you eat a salad, it's like, bro, I can't lose no weight. All that dressing you're using. And then we finish it up with the nutritional yeast. And you can go crazy with nutritional yeast. Okay? So, we come around. That's what that bad boy should look like. Right? That's what that bad boy should look like. Look at that. That's a Buddha bowl. That's a medicine salad. It's Buddhist candy for the day. Try it, y'all.